Jan, so much for us to really talk about here. We go back a ways, you and I. Uh, I've announced your racing for a long time and I had the pleasure of doing so. Um, a lot of things that I want to touch on, but quickly, you know, normally when a driver, you're from, uh, from Belgium, normally when a driver comes from Europe to the U.S. to start racing there, they follow, you know, USF 2000 or Atlantic, you know, Formula Atlantics or something uh, more akin to what they've been driving. You're one of the few guys that came over from Europe and immediately started racing in the United States at arguably the top level of open wheel in Indy cars, in, in champ car with uh, Dale Coyne. Um, that must have been one heck of a transition, one coming from Formula 3 and Formula 3000, which you did some racing and obviously it's very fast stuff, but in the Indy cars. Uh, and in North America, uh, big step. Yeah, that's all. Uh, all good, good memories. Uh, it was. Uh, it's something that I've been working towards when I was, um, you know, when I was still racing in in Europe. I'd say I knew um, about two years prior to, uh, you know, prior to coming to the U.S. that this is where I, where I wanted to end up, and uh, I had a plan, and uh, it took some time to um, for all or for all of it to come together, but. Um, I was I was really excited to um, you know for 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 all of it to kind of pan out and and for me to uh, to get my first uh, first step with um, with Dalecon here in the in the US. What was the you said you had a plan, but what was the reason that you wanted to to make an attempt to become a racer in North America and make that move? What prompted that? Well, the, uh, the the honest uh, you know the honest answer there is that uh, I was really um, I've been racing in Europe since I was uh, ten years old and and most of that as a as a professional driver and we we were lucky you know or I was fortunate to to have been uh, very you know very successful in, in, in all the junior formulas karting Formula Four Formula Three all of that always winning races and uh, I found myself. Um, spending uh, uh, maybe too much time in, in, in race control uh, after races, uh, argue, arguing over over you know who had won the race or, or you know what some of the issues were during the race, and and it was kind of a, it became a bit of an old record where um, um, yeah after after all you know after so many years. I was ready for a change and, and a change of culture more than anything. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I was happy to, of course, did my, you know, did my research and I had a good, um, you know, my, of course, my good friend, uh, Patrick Long, who had, um, who was a good resource for me as far as bringing me up to speed, what, uh, what racing was like here in the, in the U S and, um, yeah, a very, very early on, as you know, pr pretty much from the very beginning, when I moved to the U S I, I could feel that that was, um, exactly what i was looking for and and the change that i uh, the change that i needed and wanted and then in 08 after you'd done a couple years in in uh, champ car um you started to do some sports car driving in the u.s in gt racing um in 2014 that took another leap in a way when you got tied up with what would become a very long association with right motorsports um and and racing porsches and you've sort of since become known as a Porsche guy, um, you know, Wright is obviously a top team, but uh, what what got you connected with them and what's allowed it to be such a long lived relationship? Yeah, I think the key in all of that is, uh, has always been uh, Patrick, uh, who um, he obviously, uh, he was, uh, you know, he was the Porsche guy here in, in the US and still is. And uh, he had all the connections, and he was uh, he was nice enough to uh, to put me in touch with a few people. And it took a little, you know, it took some time to uh, to get to know uh, the right the right people, and also to establish myself here in the U.S. as um, you know as as a GT as an endurance driver. And then finally, uh, we found uh, you know the, the perfect match with uh, with Wright Motorsports. And yeah, have I've been there, you know, for um, you know for quite some time now, and still. Uh, I'd say I'd say we're still, you know, the relationship is is getting stronger, you know, every year, and we're doing um, more and more things together on and off the track. So uh, I've really enjoyed, um, you know, the last couple of years, uh, especially uh, working with Johnny and uh, and his crew. 
Well, it's going to be tough for you to beat what unfolded last year in 2021 because you won with Wright Motorsports. Uh, you won the, the Drivers Championship and they the Team Championship in Michelin Pilot Challenge. You won the IMSA Michelin Endurance Challenge, which is the endurance for race endurance uh, format with Wright in GT Daytona. And you won the Pirelli World Challenge GT Championship along with the Team Championship. All of those successes allowed you to do something that is very rare, and that's win the global, the, the hugely prestigious Porsche Cup Award for what is really awarded to the most successful privateer or independent Porsche driver in the world. That had to be just incredible. Yeah, what is crazy about that is that it's something that I had, I'd never even uh looked at it to be honest because it, it was it was really not on my uh, on my radar and and also as a professional driver you have little control over whether you're going to be in a position to win you know to win the porsche cup um yes. it's all you know it's it's driven by results and 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 even more so by the amount of races that you uh, that you do win a porsche so last year was um you know it, it was an, an incredible year for for myself for the team um and yeah it's a, it's a year that'll be hard to it'll be hard to beat but uh we're on a we're on a on a on a good on a good path again this year um you've got a huge race coming up in imsa obviously uh and you are once again right in the hunt in terms of being able to win the actual gt daytona championship this year after what some some um nine races you guys are you and ryan are 57 points out of the lead going into the Petit Le Mans. I mean, it's as close as it can get when you think about you can, it's 350 points to win. Incredibly close battle. Yeah, I think it's, um, uh, yeah, just, it's unbelievable that we, um, I think this year really, really and truly has been in such a, such a team effort because we, we didn't always have the pace. And um, I mean, you start every season hoping that um, hoping that you'll get to the end of it, fighting for the fighting for the championship. And we all know, you know, having done this for so long, that that doesn't it just doesn't happen every year. There there are so many variables and there are so many things that uh, you know that can go uh, wrong, you know, throughout the season. But for us to be there again is is um, just um, yeah, it just shows what 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 kind of team uh, Wright Motorsports is. You've raced at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. You've at at Daytona. You've won Sebring. How do you rate the Petite in terms of sheer more than anything else mental difficulty to be able to just survive, let alone win? Yeah, I think here in the for for us here in North America, I think it is the the absolute uh, toughest race of the of the season. Um, they are. I think every race has their has their own challenges and and. Um, uh, and, and there's, you know, I, I enjoy driving, you know, at all the tracks and doing all the events. I, I certainly enjoy the, the long, the long distance races, even, even more so than the, than the, than the sprint races. But, uh, Petit Le Mans is, is extra special because one, just the layout of the track. I mean, this is a, this is a real racetrack. Uh, it's, it is, uh, you know, that there's, it, it is very high risk, you know, when you're driving, um, you know, when you're driving at the limit. And it is so narrow, so you know, so few places um, uh, for for you know for the faster cars to uh, to overtake you. Um, yeah, mentally, it's um, it, it's a, it's a drag. It's I mean, but it's it's what makes it fun. Uh, quick backstory that you're well aware of, but my wife and I lived in Dunedin, Florida, for a while, and Dunedin Cyclery was the bicycle shop right on the Pinellas Trail that we would go to, and we rented our place out for like 18 months, so we hadn't been back. I walk into the shop to make an appointment to get our bikes tuned up. And the first thing I see when I walk in is a Porsche 911 tub and all kinds. And I'm going, well, something's very different here. And, and the name had changed to Cafe Racer. I walk into the bike shop area itself. It's completely different. So I'm talking to the guy behind the counter and he says, yeah, a new guy bought it. And I said, well, what's with, you know, the Porsche sitting out there? And he said, well, he said, the guy who bought it is a, is a professional Porsche driver. And I'm going, I wonder who that is. And I turn around and you go walking by behind me. And I just turned and said, Jan, um, you've been able to marry, as it turns out, a lifelong passion for bicycling and your professional career. Uh, a great story. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that, you know, of course, coming from Belgium, it's the, 
you know, the, the land of uh, the land of cycling. Uh, so it's something that was always, I'd say, in my blood and in the family. But I, I really only uh, fell in love with it once I moved here to uh, to Florida. Uh, my uncles back home they um, they all raced at a at a at a professional or semi professional uh, level, and they tried really hard to um, you know to get me on the bike when I was younger, but. The, the truth is, is that I never, I never enjoyed riding in the, in the cold weather. Um, yeah. Even though, you know, we had to ride the bike to school uh, every day, day in and out, you know, rain, rain or shine, we, we were always on the bike, but I never got into road cycling um, because of the, you know, because of the weather and then moved here to Florida. And um, yeah, within, within a, a few weeks of me moving here, that's, uh, that's, that's all I started doing. And then from there, <clears throat> you know, a few years later, came the idea of uh, of running uh, or having a, a bike shop.